Hello everybody and welcome to the Kenny Hack. Um, tonight I'm going to be showing you another no paint canvas technique. This one does not involve applying any of my uh, ebonizing pre-stain. This is burned straight on to a different kind of canvas material that you can find at most any of your fabric stores more than likely or get online very cheap and quick um, very little prep work it's just basically rewrapping the piece of canvas with this material and you can run at super high speeds this one was burned at 9,000 millimeters per minute and 70 percent power and the power was actually a little too high I probably should have been at about 60 percent but let's get into the how to's and what for's and Explore this method, uh, add it to your repertoire of different methods you can offer to your clients. And with the high speeds you can run, it should be a good money maker for you. You're really cutting down on your laser time versus other techniques. So let's get into it. So this here is what we're starting off with. This here is just a standard 8x10 stretch canvas from Hobby Lobby. You can pick up like a eight pack of these things for like ten dollars. You might as well buy the pre-stretch canvas. You can't you can't make them as cheap as what you can buy the packs. If you just buy the stretcher boards it is going to cost you more to buy the stretcher boards than buying the pre-stretch canvases. And <clears throat> what I'm burning on here this is faux suede it's fake suede you can get the, this is about the lightest color of tan that you can get it's called like taupe um, don't bother getting the pure white faux suede I've tried it it is such a pure white it just reflects all the laser light it does not catch the laser and I can't get it to burn so don't waste your money. I already wasted 20 bucks of mine buying a couple yards of white uh, faux suede. It just doesn't work. But this comes, you can get it in this light taupe to like almost a buckskin, which is just another shade darker of brown, to like almost a chocolate brown. And they all burn really nice. Like this this really light colored buckskin, or uh, this wouldn't be buckskin, this would be taupe. It's just a little darker than white. But, like I said, the white faux suede will not burn. I could not get it to burn at all, so don't waste your money. Just get this taupe colored shade. All I did was re-stretch it onto a piece of canvas. You can see I've ran a couple different test patterns on this back edge. Made sure my focus was good. Now this stuff here it's it's something different to try. Maybe your clients don't want just a black and white image like the, the painted black canvas techniques. And where this has an advantage over the painted black canvas, like when I've done black canvas art work, I have to run about 4,000 millimeters per minute to in about 80% power. Um, this test strip right here, which you can see, this is on the newsprint scale. Down here at the very edge, that's 10% power. And that's running 9,000 millimeters per minute at 70% power. You can run very fast on this stuff. It burns very easily. Um, almost to even 7. That's, I'm going to run this test at 70%. And hopefully that's not too burnt. Now the downside to this product is if you get a large area that's burnt solid black, when this stuff burns, it becomes pretty fragile. It's easy to, if you put a lot of st stress on it, you'll be able to tear the fabric. So keep that in mind. If you're doing an image that's almost solid black, this stuff is going to get very fragile. It, it's going to be very easy to tear it. 
So be cautious on what kind of images you're doing. Um, I'll kind of jump into the next part. I'll show you what image I'm going to burn. I've already adjusted my image on my phone using PixArt, converted the image to black and white, set it to an 8 by 10 size so it'll fit on this board. Then I sent it to myself in Messenger and now I'll start adjusting it in Lightburn and I'll show you what that image is on the next part. So this here is the image I'm going to be burning. Um, I kind of feel since this material is kind of that light tan, I think it kind of lend itself to outdoor pictures, wildlife photos, maybe wedding photos. It, it kind of gives it that rustic look. Um, it might not be perfect for every kind of photo, but it's just something else to offer to your clients that want something other than just a standard black and white photo on canvas that's you know he said you can get that done anywhere burning it on this faux suede just gives it a different look to it it's something different that a little more of an artistic look to it and something different that they might be willing to pay the extra little extra amount to get this done over a black and white on canvas image that they can get done at Walmart for pretty cheap so it's just something else to try um, like I said I already adjusted this image over in PixArt and so I'm just going to leave all the shape properties right where they're at now as I said like in these areas that are burning pure black that's going to make the canvas pretty fragile but you know, I, I go in knowing that, so I'm going to not mishandle it. Um, but that being said, when you adjust your image, try, try not to have... This looks really black on, the, on the, this video, but it's actually pushed down a little bit from pure black. I didn't want anything 100% black or anything 100% white. You can see... You've seen in my test print that ten, even 10% 10 could show up, but it was just barely showing up. So you, like all of the Stormtrooper's armor, I wanted it to be a little bit shaded. I didn't want it pure white. I wanted the laser to have a chance to burn in a little color. Because being on that tan background, it, it needs to have some shading to stand out a little better. Um, so we're going to give this one a burn. Um, see how it turns out and we'll jump to there I'll kind of I'm already focused on the piece so once again this is here is how I quickly without having a camera or anything to locate it I set it to zero and normally that's where I'd focus and Normally, you want to home it first, have it hit the reset counter, get a good zero, and then it's already focused. So we'll move it to the left corner. And this is already set at about 35 millimeters clearance from the edge. So we'll turn on the fire button. And we kind of get it positioned under that bottom left corner. Pretty close. And then I set it. Move it over to the right corner. Let it track across. Kind of move it, get it over to that edge. And so that's going to get me pretty close. Now I'm going to hold shift in the frame key. And so now it's going to start tracing that outline. 
And as long as it's pretty close to tracking along the edge, that, that side's pretty, oh, I can move her up a hair. Get it moved over here. Might have to do it a couple times just to make sure I'm getting all the edges where I want. So we're going to track it again. Just missing that side. If it's going just outside the piece of frame, it's, it's going to be fine. Okay, so right there I'm probably pretty close. Let's do it one more time. Okay, so right there it's right just barely on the outside edge. There it's just barely catching the right edge. Now it's just barely catching the top edge. So right there, it's pretty much going to cover all my flat area of work. So I, I'm, I, f I feel I'm centered good enough right there. Now on my cut layers, you can see I'm at 9,000 millimeters per minute, 70% power. Now running at this high speed, I need some over scanning. And on these Ortur 20s, if you look in the G code, the acceler acceleration is 1500 it just says 1500. I'm assuming that's 1500 millimeters per millimeter. So if we're running 9,000 millimeters, we need 6 millimeters for it to slow down and speed up. And this is generally where I run and I keep this 4%. And it automatically, like, if I was running 6,000 millimeters, this would go down to 4 millimeters of overscan. And that would, once again, if you're doing 1500 millimeters of acceleration, that's giving it enough time to slow down and speed back up. And I'm also going to do 254 DPI. Um, this stuff burns so easily, I'm kind of treating it like wood. Normally on wood, 254 is plenty of resolution. On When you go to like the paint and tile methods, normally I like to run a higher DPI. So I use like 300 to 318. Um, well, well, wait a sec. I just remembered when I scaled this image, the native resolution was 300. So I'm going to match that native resolution of 300. And we're just going to go from there. If I wanted to change that, I might have got some banding issues where I was trying to match 254 with 300. So I'm glad I remembered that, that the native resolution was already 300 on this image. And you see, I'm burning 90 degrees because the Y axis on these Ortur 20s burns better on the Y and it's a finer laser. It's a narrower laser beam on the Y axis. And in other tests, I have found with my laser anyway that I burn darker going right to left than I do left to right. That might take some tests on your part to see if your laser works the same way. Um, and so I have found, like, to get the max performance out of my laser, I burn vertically and right to left. That gives me the hottest laser pass I can run on my laser. Um, other than that, that's going to be where we're running. Let's see how long this is predicted to take for an 8x10. I don't need to invert this image. It, it should be running black where it burned black where I want it. Right now, it's set for just over an hour. So, if I was making this image for a customer, it's like if you've heard me talk in other images or in other deals, if I'm getting at least 20 bucks an hour for my laser time, so this one would be like 25 bucks worth of laser time. My material costs are maybe five dollars for the canvas and restretching the faux suede over it. Um, so about thirty. You know, when you double that price, you always assume that you might mess up your material and have to replace it. So usually you double your material cost. So if I could do an eight by ten for thirty-five dollars, I feel. 
I'm getting my money's worth out of my laser time, my material. If you're very good at editing your photos, that only takes me five or ten minutes to edit the photo and get it where I want once I've found the image I like and to get it over to here. It doesn't take me very long once you learn how to do it. So for me to charge personal time, that's all in how good you are at editing your photos. It's it's not right to charge. If you're, if you're just learning this process, it might take you a half hour, an hour. To where if you're adding in your labor costs versus somebody that's very proficient at it, it's going to be tougher for you to price your price your product to be competitive until you get proficient at editing photos and getting them ready to burn. Or you, if when as soon as you can get to where that's down to 10 or 15 minutes, now your time is no longer really a factor because this doesn't take any painting prep any drying time it, it takes five or ten minutes to stretch the canvas onto there restaple it down and I'm not the best at that you can see my folded corners aren't the best yet I'm still trying to learn how to fold them corners properly I I've watched several videos and I'm, I'm still terrible at it I've never been a very good present wrapper it's usually slap something on there and put a bunch of tape on it and I call it good something I have to improve on but this isn't on how to wrap canvas this is on just showing how well this material burns and it's a just really improves your production time on doing canvas work and it might be something that's more appealing to some people over just the black painted canvas so that's enough jabbering um, go ahead and get this burn started I'll catch you back at the end of the video and we'll see how it turns out so a quick clip in here while it's burning <clears throat> just so you can check my speed say yeah, I'm doing uh, 900 millimeters a minute this is running a little over 10 inches um, so it takes about a second and a half, little over a second and a half to second three quarters to get all the way across it. Uh, 12 inches would be right at two seconds. But I can tell already it looks really good on the video here, but it is probably a shade too dark. I probably could either turn my power down to about 60% and still be good, or I could adjust my gamma and my brightness and contrast and light burn and also lighten the image up some. Um, I've, this is only the third image I've ever burned on this material and the first two I did were probably about over a month and a half ago. Um, if you've seen me in the forums you might remember that photo that was one I did of my dog that passed away last Christmas. And that was the first time, like, time I tried this taupe image, uh, or this taupe colored faux suede. And that one turned out really good. You, I really had to push the image to the mid-tones and uh, really get it off of black, being a Doberman, to try to get some of the shading in the fur. It was pretty tough to do. Um, <clears throat> But that one turned out really good. I kind of botched the corners trying to fade in some black shading and that. It kind of botched my image up, but it was just something to try. This here is on the chocolate brown. And it doesn't look too bad in the video, but in person, it's really, really dark. Um, the, the video is really lightening up that chocolate brown. It, it, it's a very dark, dark image. And I really wouldn't recommend going all the way to chocolate brown uh, with the faux suede. This uh, taupe colored or the buckskin. I'll, I'll dig through my pile and see if I can find a piece of the buckskin to show you kind of how the shading is different. Hold on, let me see if I can find that. So here's some of the buckskin color that I've kind of found. You can see how much darker it is than the taupe. And 
it's almost as dark as that chocolate it's it's just a different shade of brown now I really I haven't tried this color yet to see how dark of an image it burns um, so to be honest I really don't know yet um, it might work really good might not work but most of these uh, brown colored suede you can find at your local fabric places I could find most all the tans at one of my like either Walmart Joann's fabrics um, any of your local sewing places they'll usually carry the brown suede the white suede I had to order that stuff and it took a couple weeks to get it in and I thought well I'm I'm, I'm on to something super spectacular here this is gonna completely revolutionize the canvas technique no more painting stuff no more burning off paint just slap on that white faux suede and it'll burn nice and black and it's gonna be perfect and well as I said my experiments just didn't turn out I couldn't get it to burn at all and so I kinda of threw this technique on the back burner you know I knew the light tans burned really well and I thought maybe once I got to a thousand subscribers I'd throw it out there but I was kind of feel like putting out some video this weekend so I jumped onto it now uh, it's just something new to show get people working on it and seeing if they like it you know as a, just something else to try uh, but it's kind of where information I can give out for right now and other things I've tried I said this one's not gonna come out as perfect as I'd hoped just because it is still a little on the dark side you know running at 9,000 millimeters per minute on a diode laser is smoking fast for diode lasers and this was out without any kind of pre-treatment no very simple just stretch it throw it on there run at the speed you're comfortable and find the power settings that work for that speed most people aren't comfortable running at this 9,000 millimeters per minute I've done it enough I'm pretty confident in what I'm doing I got all kinds of parts to repair anything if it breaks if I bust a belt I can replace my belts I can replace the rollers I can replace the stepper motors so I assume all risk in running this speed. I, I don't suggest you just jump right up to 9,000 for your diode and giving it a whirl. Work your work your way up to it until you're comfortable, until you're you're sure your machine is all set up properly, that your belts aren't going to be jumping off the rollers, it's not binding up anywhere. It took me several months to work up from 3,000 millimeters per minute to 9,000 millimeters per minute. It, it wasn't just an overnight deal. It, it took a lot of, you know, planning out, trying you know, quick runs, trying sample tests, a little liquid courage on occasion, um, just to say, what the heck, let's give it a whirl and see if we can do it. So, build build up your speed at your own pace don't feel you got to jump right up to this 9,000 millimeters per minute when if you only got your laser for a week start off slow and build up your understanding of how your machine works and if everything's secured properly tightened up properly you know and that your image is going to come out well at lower speeds before you jump up to any faster speeds I'd just be irresponsible and you know you have to assume any risk as once you go over 3,000 you're going beyond the manufacturer's recommended speed so just always keep that in mind but we'll jump back here once it's all done uh, give you like the, the things that didn't turn out well things that did turn out well there's things you can't see in the image right now that I'll, I'll get to it here at the end. It's like once I can zoom in on the image a little better, you might be able to see some of the flaws that are popping up in this method. 
and I think it's due to I might have overstretched the canvas. I might have put so much stress in the canvas, you can't see it, but there's like little wavy lines kind of going through the material, and I think that's from stretching the canvas so hard and so tight, it's putting little stress lines into the fabric. And so when you stretch that canvas, you might not want to stretch it as tight as you can pull it. Just pull it snug and not as hard as you can pull it. I think I might have caused that stress just from over tightening. And then you see on the video, it looks super outstanding on the video, but in person, it is a hair dark. So stop there and we'll jump back here when it's all finished and wrap it up. So here is the finished image. Overall, turned out very well. I'll see if I can get in here close enough to where you can see them stretch lines that are just stress lines. Like, see right there how that has kind of got like a little swirl in the, in the material. It's kind of wavy. I think that's from kind of overstretching the canvas or not getting it evenly stretched. So if I maybe would have just put a little less stress on the stretch, it might not have got that wavy image. But once you get back a little ways, you can't see it. You have to be pretty close to see them wavy lines. And I said um, on the video, it looks really good. But in person, it is a hair dark. I probably should have gone down to about 60% power, which running at 9,000 millimeters, if you only have to run 60% on your laser, that is not putting any kind of load on your laser. You can run a lot, make a lot of projects running at that high speed and low power. And if you're only comfortable running 3,000, you might you might be down to like the twenty percent power range. Your power range. You're not putting any load on your laser at all. It burns very easily. One thing I would change is I wouldn't recommend running this edge to edge on your image. This stuff burns so easy. If your image isn't perfectly centered, if it's only a millimeter off, and it overhangs a little bit, you can see how far down the side it burns which it just looks kind of sloppy and so if you would take it back like a half inch from the edge if this is an 8 by 10 if I'd have made it a 7 by 9 image left myself a half inch of relief all the way around that would have probably knocked it down to underneath an hour of burn time and it would better frame the picture and you wouldn't have these overburned edges or just slightly overhang a little piece a little too much and it gets an uneven edge. That's something to maybe do in the future is leave yourself a little bit of perimeter. Keep all the image on the flat area. Don't try to burn it all. Like this bottom edge really turned out uneven. You know, like this, this corner, it's a nice straight line and it kind of gradually ran to just barely being off the edge. But... I'm not one of them sites that's going to off camera burn 10 images and then show you the one perfect image and say, hey, look how great this method is. It's so easy to do. You'll make so much money doing this method. Oh, you know, all methods have a learning curve. You're going to have to run some practice pieces to get them to turn out right. And if we're only doing this is like the third one I've done and like I said the other two were months ago I didn't remember my settings it was just something I offhanded had some material laying around and gave it a try and found out it worked very well um, so it only take a few more practice pieces and I'd probably get my settings dialed in with this this kind of work but once again just with the speeds you can run in low power settings it is a very good method to add to your your kind of st stuff you can offer to your clients just because it is such a fast and easy method to do 
and it is gives a different style look to things that you know not everybody's just going to like the straight black and white canvases so thanks for watching please like subscribe share um comment below if you got any questions uh thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video